Hello. We are on live. <laughs> early, early start today. I know. Usually, like, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna start pre prepping my stream at like eight thirty, and then you go on at like ten. <laughs> I think our last one was like at eleven. I started like what? at eleven. What changed today? I do, I don't know how to explain this. I I thought I was gonna start even earlier than this. Cause I was just like, ah, oh, there's, there's some scans I need to do. And I feel like scans will go quick. And then like, you know, like, it's just like a, a good, a good thing to get over with. <laughs> well, are you doing a scan stream today? For the most part. Yeah. Um, so I need to do this, but I'm realizing I had like four packages to redeem and zero just redeemed all of them, but I don't have my overhead set up. So I'm wondering if we can hold off the package openings until later. Um, thinking that maybe the scans, the scan part of the stream might go fast enough that I can switch the camera over here. Zero, I hope that's all right. Anyways. Okay. Uh, I guess let's just begin. You know, you just said a word that reminded me of something said overhead you say overhead earlier overhead yes it's like such an old word old word it reminds me of overhead projectors <laughs> Were those yeah of course they're like the, that's when you know you're a boomer the older version of like actual like digital tv projectors <laughs> Those were actually really cool. I remember like they teachers were. would like use, like transparency paper and like it's use like a, marker. They were really sick, I, I gotta say, yeah. And then I remember thinking like, man, my teachers have like really good handwriting. <laughs> Stottle keeps welcome. I kinda missed the XR stream. How was it? Uh it was So the board is cool. I don't like how I built it. <laughs> Um, I wish I could show my overhead, but I'm not actually driving it right now. It's actually right behind us. Um, I don't think my choice of like switches and the springs I put in the switches was very strong, but the board is sick. I will say that. I also think that the keycaps too. Uh, I got the 21 KB Xiaomi keycaps and I think like, I don't know, the space bar, space bar might be warped or something. I don't know. But the board is sick, and it looks super sick. <laughs> um, I'm projecting that I will probably rebuild it at some point. Is it worth the price? Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> I'd say it's worth it. Uh, like it's it, it just looks super sick, and and for what it is, it's it's super sick. Um, and I've definitely. I've definitely paid for keyboards like in that price range and I think it's it's like definitely like on par. I think the polished stainless steel is is sick. So All right. We're going to get started with these scans except I need to go get the next roll of film. Um uh, I was working on um I was working on scans all of like yesterday cuz I I had a gig uh, concerts, uh, a concert I shot on Saturday night. Um, but I have like six more rolls to scan and is it six? I think it's six and, uh, four of them are medium format. So let's go, let's go grab another 35 right now. Also, something happened uh, on the last stream. The audio kind of got messed up in the VOD. Um, I think what had happened, what had happened was, um, at some point midstream, it was like covered up by me playing music, but at some point midstream, everything just started getting buzzy, like progressively super buzzy. The heck? Is that gonna work? I hope that works. Uh, 
Glad to hear that you like it. I hope that I can tune in to the rebuild stream in the future. Right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. All right. ST1. Something strange has happened here. Camera not powering on properly. Why is that? Oh, we good? We're good. Okay. Sick. All right, so we're going to try to power through these scans. Hopefully, like, again, this quick copy stand scanning portion of the stream. I, I hope it won't take longer than, like, 30 minutes. What do you think, Andy? What do you project? Is Andy still here? Oh, Andy's gone. <laughs> Hello? Yo. Er. All right. What are you doing? Okay, so this is a little bit of a trick. Because uh, I think I might have advertised keyboard photos, but some of this, some of these roles are not keyboard related. Wait. So I think the first couple here are going to be more so um, concerts. Ooh, this is going to be weird. Look at how crazy this is. All right, we will call this, I think this is Cine still. No, it's GC400. All right. But hey, uh, also, shouts out Frank, shouts out Zero, it's Dottle. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Drew, welcome. All right, I'm hoping, are we good to go? Let's try this. Oh, this is way off. Trying to get this position just right. Struggling. Okay. I think that's good. Thanks again for the resin. I, I still got to ship it out, Drew. So. Uh, 
Okay. I, uh, I did ship out a bunch of domestic orders today. Um, but I wanted to be able to get to the, uh, the ones a little further out probably later this week. Hopefully sooner rather than later. We'll see. Okay. Got to delete this. Let's reset. Ava, hey, did you send me my new Topre? Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> Ava, welcome. Right, let's try this again. So these will come in a little darkened, but we'll make some adjustments in post. Boy, it is a rough. It's like almost nothing going on in these shots. here. Whoa, I don't know where this stops and starts. Some of this starts to be the Tyler roll. Okay. Putting a scanner behind you wasn't a good idea, was it? Uh, well, it's not the best idea. The, the problem is that it, there really was no other space for it. <laughs> I guess it was the best idea, but overall for everything else that's set up here. All right. Oh, that was Vince. Oh, interesting. Let's see if we can get like a good one to calibrate off of. Oh, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> All right, let's try this one. This one seems like maybe it'll work. I'm 
just gonna do a little quick inversion here and test this out. Warm. Ooh. Oh. Let's sync all of these now, see if anything really changes. Here we go. Yeah, a lot of these Claro ones are going to be really dark. This is probably the best one, I think. It's all tiny. Oh, sorry about that again. How do I chill on this? Okay, hopefully that should chill a little bit. Let's go grab the uh, the next roll. Next rolls out there. Okay. <laughs> it's still, geez, it's still having all these notification sounds. Okay, this one should be this Tyler one. Ooh. We'll see how this one goes because I know that we, we had some good spots for a large majority of this show. Okay. <laughs> oh, interesting. All right, sorry about this. I've been just noticing a bunch of funny things to you. You won. All right, let's try this out. Okay. Uh, all right. 
One second. Okay, so it's three. Right, these ones get starts to get really interesting here with Tyler up so close. That's it. That's it for this roll here. Alrighty. Okay, so I have finished what I think is six rolls of 35 millimeter out of six. Four more in medium format, so we're gonna have to go and change what's in this holder, but I'm excited to see some of these photos. Uh, I just kinda wanna see what it looks like where we got with all of this. This one seems like an all right one to maybe try to calibrate off of. Neutral seems good, but I kind of want to pull it away from like the greenish color. All right, let's try to apply this to all of them. See what we get. Got a couple of shots of this Caliucci set, but we're pretty far away. All right, F starting from 15 on to maybe, maybe about 10 shots. It's like really interesting. Let's see, I wanna, <laughs> I'm going really, really quickly on this one. But I, I wanna see it. All right, this one's really underexposed. Steven! Sure. 
<laughs> Thank you for the 18 months. Appreciate you being here. Oh, Anthixius. Oh my, oh my goodness. <laughs> Anthixius with the nine months, the nine month streak, welcome. We're doing some photo film scans. Wink 2C, hi, how are you going? Hey, I'm, I'm doing good. We're working on some photo film scans. I got really close to Tyler. We went out on April Fool's Day. April 1st. What does Hydre do? Oh, you should redeem it and we can find out. Ooh, let's try for this one. I wished I shot more when he was, when we got this close or when, I guess when he got this close. Water. <laughs> All right. Well, here's your hydrate, Steven. Cheers. <laughs> that is it. That is it. <laughs> what keyboard do you have right now? Oh, oh my goodness. All hex. What the? With the five gifted? What? <laughs> All hex. Welcome and thanks for being here. Ooh, Zero, uh, Giorin, Stottle, Sinvec, and How Good Are Keyboards. Enjoy the three best emotes on Switch. <laughs> Cheng's the best username. Hey, you got the level three hype train going, guys. Hey, what's going on? All Hex, hey, shouts out All Hex for the, uh, the five gifted. Awesome. Appreciate it. We're doing some, uh, some film photo scans here. A few from this uh, Tyler the Creator sh show that Ada and I went to about a week and a half ago. <laughs> How is warm? Oh. I want it to be. Oh, this is a tough one. Or might be too much. Cool is not right. Neutral. Cine. Standard. I guess neutral is the best, probably. Time to subject Tim Kula and get the Tim Kula to go along with the SO. Yes. <laughs> What keyboard do you have right now? Uh, the keyboard I'm using right now is the uh, the K. Uh, you could hit the build command. This is the one that I'm driving. Oh, sorry. Wait, what? Keyboard. The keyboard command. There you go. Um, I was driving the Aksara that we built last Thursday for a bit, but um, a couple things that happened. One is like I actually don't really like the build that I put together in it, although I, I do like the keyboard. Like, I think the way the keyboard looks like beats out everything else, but um, the build itself, like I. I didn't really like it that much. Um, and then on top of that, there was actually a point where I spilled a little bit of sparkling water on it. <laughs> I just wanted to, like, I I wiped it down, dried it off. Uh, I just wanted to keep it safe for now. What are your thoughts on the Logitech G915 TKL? Hey, Steven, I think it's the perfect board for you. <laughs> Drew, <laughs> Drew, did you just sub to Tim Keyless just to get that right now? <laughs> Because that did not appear as a uh, an emote the first time around when you said that. <laughs> All right, these are some pretty cool shots too, though. No, I wasted my channel. <laughs> All right. Well, there it is. Pretty cool roll, um, but we're gonna go back, probably fine tune them a little bit better. Uh, we could we could do that later, I could do that off stream, but just wanted to be able to do this. But I think now at this point, we could do some of these, uh, who is Tim Keyless? I know, only, only know Timely Kiss, ooh. Okay, so at this stage now, 
Um, we're going to switch up the uh, the mount here to a better handle or accommodate for 120. So let's go and do that. I have a what looks like largely uh, keyboards. I think this is the Y6 and a few others. Um, I have a ton of uncut film, and we're going to actually cut that a little bit later on stream. Um, but for now, you got a little something to do. Um, so in case you guys want to see it, maybe I have a better shot of showing it this time. Oh, it's like, it's hard to, it's kind of a little hard to see, but there's a mount that the, uh, the camera uses, or the uh, the film scanning setup uses. Are you gonna build a keyboard today or what are you doing today on the stream? Uh, we are going to be just largely doing these scans. Um, And then uh, we'll do a little bit of, it's not a build, um, but I did want to work on some plates later if we have time. All right. <laughs> hey, we got a level two hype train emote. So we've mounted this up. I'm gonna replace this here. All right, then we're gonna set this like this. Oh, you know what? Um, I'm supposed to turn this entire rig, so. There's all this like photo film here that I'm gonna need to move around. So bear with me. We're gonna cut this up later. I'm trying to keep it relatively safe. All right. This isn't the right way it was supposed to be, was it? I'm supposed to turn it the other way. Oh, is that it? Okay. This is Puya. This is Puya. I know I missed a bunch of messages here, but uh, I'm still trying to get this all settled. Give me one second. Okay. Oh, 
Sorry, you guys can't see this uh, right here. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna punch this guy in. to gonna wipe this down with the microfiber. Okay, and I'm gonna insert this. Okay, let's check this out. So the trick here, change that to autofocus. I'm supposed to be able to hit this button, but it doesn't seem to be functioning properly. There we go, okay. So we are pretty far in. So this is kind of where we want to be. And let's try this. All right, that's a little close now. Let's keep going up we kind of start seeing the black border. Oh yeah, we're still pretty far away from it. Okay. So it still has to elevate a little tiny bit. Okay, I think we're good to go here. All right, so this is Portrait 800, I think. So let's go and find this. Uh, that is, yeah, that is 120. Okay, let's try this out. Ooh. Okay, so this one, I have to keep this live view on. Uh, and I realize some of you guys might not be able to see it down here. Peter Poppins, welcome. Yes, we uh, added a new a new vinyl feature here to stream. So if you've got some, uh, some suggestions and some channel points, feel free. This might technically still be a little too close, but I think it's okay. We can we can manage here. Okay. 
So there's a lot of dust, a lot of uh, dust artifacts showing up because it's just it's hard to get it brushed and cleaned off, especially at the beginning of these uh, these uh, 120 strips. But I think that that'll be okay. Like we can manage. Like we'll be able to clean this off in post. Everything should be fine. It does indeed look like a keyboard. Oh, there's some weird stuff that might have happened to this film here, which is a little bit of a bummer, right? There's a foot there. <laughs> a pink Y6. I messed up? What did I mess up? Alright. I was only focus on the keyboard instead of the foot. <laughs> Okay, so I think this one, my intent was to try to get that back to go along with the uh, the keycap set. All right, these, I'm recognizing 120 scanning is going to prove to be a little bit annoying. I can already sort of tell here. because I have to do this back and forth. No J. Cole? Wait, no J. Cole as in you don't want J. Cole? <laughs> or as in you want me to play some J. Cole? <laughs> no, the discography? I, I have Revenge of the Dreamers 3. So I could play that if you want. Like that's, we'll get close there, right? Are you down for that? I did think like, I, I, I figured I might've had J. Cole at one point, but I guess I didn't. But I realized I do have dreamers though. Forest Hills Drive? I, I do not have Forest Hills Drive. <laughs> Unfollowed. All right. Uh, let's let's bring that out, yeah? Before the money. This is one of the first ones I own. I actually, I did, um, I went, I was out in Berkeley with Ada over the weekend. And um, we did drop by uh, Amoeba and Rasputin. We got some, we got some cool vinyl. Um, so that that should be added on the uh, on the list, on the Discogs list. Vile DJ, welcome back. Side A. Is this one or two disc? I guess it's one disc. Okay. So we'll run it. Every player picked out for a future purchase, but I'm pricing on any new speakers first, plus building a vinyl, list. A vinyl collection going to bend me over too. That is 100% true. Okay. Oh. Sorry, I also didn't show the, uh, the cover, but for anyone who hasn't seen it. Um, I don't really, I don't have the... The overhead is over there, connected by USB for the uh, the uh, the scans, the tethered scans. But this is what the cover looks like. 
Oh, this actually is two disc. I don't know why I didn't think it was. Okay. Is this too loud? Let me know if this is too loud. I recognize it might be. Okay. Uh, let's continue along. This shit slapped when it came out. <laughs> Good times. It was what, 2015, I think? Around 2015? Maybe even before? Next board, what we got here? Oh, that's the uh, the Viper with metalkeyboards.no. We will adjust the colors here um, when we finish this roll, so I know it's gonna need it. about this guy oh that's our HG our heavy grail I knew that 6u looked uh, a little different than we usually see I've been uh, meaning to try to fill out the uh, the keyboard shots on my collection page.
Let's try this one. This one we might have a little bit more luck, I'm hoping. try this out. Mm. Hmm. This one's an interesting one, right? Kodak standard. These do nothing. <laughs> Neutral's still the best. Maybe AVG. Probably still neutral. Now let's sync all of these. Let's see what we get. Well, let's try this outdoor one. This is Ada and Tebow. For those unfamiliar with Tebow, he is a young boy. He's a little bit reactive, so we do have to keep him a little bit muzzled. He's good with humans, though. Human people. He loves human people. Uh, it's just uh, other animals he has uh, trouble with. Oh, it, it, this thing happens every now and then where I think NLP seems to break down a little bit. So let's close that up and then let's open it again. Okay. Try this again. Warm. Probably neutral or warm, huh? Right now, what if we try to apply this to one of these indoor ones? How different does it change? Well, it's very like green <laughs> alright so here are some very very indoor ones should be close to white I want that background to be white this is my kitchen counter Not bad. I think cool is probably the way to go, especially for what are going to be a couple of silver ones here. Yeah, we might be okay with this. Sync this up. See what we get. Oh, <laughs> the all black keycaps. I think these are going to be hard to work with on photo film. Like metering for these guys is a little bit tougher. Oh, it's time to switch. <clears throat> what a good boy. He's a good boy. Oh, this is weird, ain't it? This ain't doing what I want it to do.
is like closer to maybe showing off something all right. Hmm. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to this one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise the darks. I think this is what we'll want. We wanna raise these darks by kind of a lot and then resync with these guys. See what happens. Ooh, that's better. That is better. <laughs> I got some crazy, crazy dust artifacts out here. I'm gonna have to heal out. Look at this crazy thing. This guy's funny though. I wonder if we can, let's try doing this. See what we get. Hard to, hard to capture. I mean, it's just like a peeking out of the drain hole, the gutter on that apartment. All right, these seem rather usable, which I'm pretty happy about. Okay. So we could throw these on the side at some point. All right, let's go and grab uh, another roll, yeah? Okay, let's, I guess we could throw this down here. We got three more rolls to go. But there are all these like bigger ones. this has happened okay I've had some weird stuff happen I don't think we're gonna be able to do this one today and I'm worried about this next one too there's some weird crusty stuff on this film it may have come from this tape but it could be anything oh, that's a bummer I really thought that we would be able to like knock this one out or knock out all my film this is all my outstanding film all my film has been kind of um, just uh, like completely out of order. I was hoping to order it today, but this is uh, this is actually film from the meetup. But there's like a big gross spot on it. I have to like go like rinse it down. I don't know if you guys want to bear with me while I like BRB for a bit to do this, or just do this another time. All right, kind of a bummer. Two of the last three are like that. So I, I just, I came across another one, but this one seems to be okay. This one actually had the problem too, um, a little bit earlier. I noticed it a little bit earlier and thought like, oh, I need to like fix this. But I didn't check the other remaining, the other remaining ones. So this is kind of, kind of sucks. 
Well, that's how it goes, I guess. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do these on stream like this. I gotta, I gotta clean them and then I gotta let them dry. Kind of a bummer. Okay, I think this is one of the two from the meetup, just based on what this picture looks like. I also feel like it's not really angled super properly. Right, let's try for that. Different board is oh this is the the white pro two. Took this back from Ada. We're gonna like tune it up a little bit better. Oh here's a TiVo. These definitely need to get a little bit of an inversion adjustment when we finish up, but because I think this is our, our last roll that we'll do because the other two need to be cleaned up like quite a lot prior to us even getting it into the scanning unit. So I'm bummed out about it, but that does give us, I guess, more time to do some other stuff and get to some of the other tasks we had a little sooner. This is, I think, our, our cheap low pro custom. I think this one is, uh, TA90 on the uh, the concrete. Yep. Ooh, our BMAC. We're getting an updated shot of the BMAC, which is exciting. Tebow, and I'm sure we're gonna have a few more of these Ada and Tebow and Cherry shots on the rest of this roll.
last one. This one might be the last one of this roll, but let's find out. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the last one. Okay. All right, we did a uh, we did a few rolls, right? But um, still two more to go. Uh, I might do them off stream. Hopefully, I do. Is just I need to I need to get them cleaned up first. But I guess we can we can close out the scanning section by just doing a, a little bit of recoloring here, reinverting. I think that might prove to be a little bit helpful. So Zay, this is the last one of the the last shot of the keyboard meetup, for which there's still an entire missing roll that needs to be cleaned up. So let's take a look and see the collection. Like a matrix ME, I think. So it's up there. Uh, dolphin? I don't know. I'm not sure what that might be. Cool. Maybe cool. Cool might work best here. All right, let's sync this up. I think maybe our outdoor ones are the best bet of giving us some more realistic coloring here. Maybe I need more of these. I need to take like a, a nice, oops, a nice outdoor shot on every roll so I have something to sort of compare against Ooh, I think this is Portrait 400. I'm getting like I get these weird color shifts when when I develop Portrait 400. It might be 400. It might be 160 though. That's 400. I knew it. Dang, this is tough. Dealing with this is always pretty tough. Oops. Let's try this out. Soften that. Let's warm it up. EVG? No, let's keep it at warm. Let's try to sync this up and see what we get. Oh, everything dark. <laughs> oh, that was goofy. Let's try this one. Tebow and the, uh, is that the concrete? Oh no! Cancel! 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 Uh, 
Uh, this wasn't the way to go. I, I gotta stop shooting 400. I think whenever I shoot 400, my ability to invert it is hindered, to say the least. I always seem to struggle. Does not seem to ooh, to like my inversion. So why Lightroom Classic over Lightroom? Uh, I think Lightroom Classic just gives me more more control. I think regular Lightroom, uh, just like the last time I tried using it, it felt like there was nothing there. <laughs> um, also, I wasn't certain if um, NLP actually um, worked in regular Lightroom. Uh, all right, I got to switch this disc with Dark Mode Media, welcome. Disc two before the money. This one's not too bad. Let's see if this we can make this a little more realistic here though. Looks almost the same. is one of our better shots here. Oh, warm. I don't know about that. I think we can get this wood to look a little bit more correct though. We just go off the uh, the white balance options here. Like this might be a little closer to what we need it to be. I like this though. I wonder what happens when we sink it all. Yeah, no, it doesn't work out. You could already tell from these thumbs. So right here is uh, the Meridian with uh, Theta's Sloth. This is weird. Feel like that might be the bordered edge. Oh, I always do this. Oh my goodness, all right. Okay, we'll restart. Okay, uh, while we're doing that, I guess we'll... Uh, Move this out of here. Okay, so we're gonna get um, ourselves prepped for a regular overhead stream, but I do need to find the um, the quick release plate typically needed for uh, putting this rigged onto my overhead, which isn't really compatible with this guy, so one second.
I'm gonna set this up and we'll do some more fun overhead stuff as people might typically like that a little bit more. See if we can get this right. Oh, wrong lens. We're going to change out this lens. Okay, so this is brightened up by quite a lot. Alrighty. We're like almost back in shape here. <clears throat> we got the overhead back. So maybe we could kind of turn it on here. Kind of. We can kind of turn it on. There we go. Hey. <laughs> back in business alrighty Blumbus Blumbus with a big old ray that party of five Blumbus what were you up to let's, uh, let's give you a follow <laughs> what up what were you uh, what were you working on or you have two today. Glad you could uh, come along here. Let's see what you are up to. Leaving some switches right on. Hey. Glad you could uh, send your whole community here. Hey, shouts out. Lost a spring. Ah. Oh. That's a bummer. I mean. Fortunately, I'm going to imagine you have a lot of extras, though, right? Warm. Cool. Warm looks pretty good. The big old raid. What you're working on? I uh, we're we were doing some photo film scans. Um, we didn't quite finish. There's a couple rolls that I have that um, when processing them, I think there was just some some strange residue. So I'm gonna have to go and clean that off. Uh, I was able to clean off like one of three earlier today, but I didn't realize that there were two more. <laughs> so we're just going through some of these scans now, and then uh in a little bit we're gonna we're gonna just gonna go over a few things uh, i know i think some people earlier wanted to see what i was driving today i just had shifted this camera over here um and then we have some packages to open and then we might work on some plate files uh afterwards let's try let's try recalibrating for this and look at this man really just hard to scan 120 I think 
Cool, I ain't done my own scanning before. I just sent my rolls out for someone to process for me. Right on. Yeah, hey, uh, I mean, <laughs> how do I put it? It's much easier to do that. <laughs> it's like, um, by doing it yourself, like, I feel like you have a little bit more control, but it's just like, it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> um, getting around to doing it. I've been, I've been trying to do, um, so like I've been I've been shooting shows recently and I've been trying to do my own processing for um like doing a little bit of photo shots and it's like it's almost like backbreaking work <laughs> like at this point um but I need to be able, like in order for me to like send over film shots um for my coverage it's that like I have to be the one to like do it so um it's kind of how it is I suppose Booney eighty six, welcome. Thanks for coming along with the raid. Okay, I think I think this is something I, I keep forgetting. Whenever I whenever I do, whenever I develop Portra, it doesn't really scan super properly. Um, but I think one thing that always helps is like Negative Lab Pro just added this this feature here called Lab Glow, and if you pull it all the way down into the like the furthest negative, then it, I think it seems to help a little bit. The white balance, not really, but in terms of the, the contrastiness, it does. I have a shoot uh, in the Philly Navy Yard this Friday. We'll be shooting a few AMGs and alleys. Ooh, nice. Nice. That's sick. All right, let's try. Look, this one I feel like kind of didn't really need this though. We could try it. Yeah, that seems to hurt more than it helps. But some of these other ones probably could benefit. Let's try this one for example. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm less certain now. Let's try the ones with skin tone. It's not foolproof. Doesn't really help in every single case. I get to really test out this new uh, 35 millimeter uh, Sigma 1.4 lens. Nice, nice. Is that the uh, okay? So I they found out. Is that the DGDN one or the DGHSM? I think I have the the older one, the HSM, and I love it. But I I'm, I'm imagining like putting out a newer product is probably like super sick dgdn nice nice so that's like the new new one Let's sync this one with the rest. This one's really nice, except like, uh, man, I gotta clean this off, huh? Ugh. <laughs> I feel like, okay, here's what I'm thinking. I might need to rescan that one entirely just because of like all of the stray, all of the stray stuff. I mean, even this just has like a lot of issues. believe this one is 800 so um, the colors here don't get so bad compared to when I'm dealing with 400 
All right, well, this is like overall, I guess, kind of chill. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean off the other two rolls off stream and then I'll probably scan them off stream. And um, I think the whole purpose, the whole exercise, the pose of the latest photo, I use the lens on your photo section of the Discord, right on. Let's check that out. Ooh, that's nice. It's a nice lens for sure. I mean, like the, just the whole, like the entirety of the Sigma art line is just like, I don't know. It's just really good. <laughs> and like, I mean, just, I mean, the newer stuff they're going to put out is just going to get better and better. So super sick. Okay. Um, All right, yeah, we're gonna have to redo some of this, but for anyone who is uh, just tuning in here, we uh, we scanned this 120 uh, earlier, this 120 roll earlier, and we got some good shots here of the heavy grill. I really like, I think I really like how this one turned out. It's just pretty plain white background, but uh, I feel like it's it's as best as it can do some justice to to the shot, to the film, all that. Very cool. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna cut up the the six rolls in front of me. Um, this is something that I just need to do to get like out of the way. So here's what we do. Um, Oh, I switched up a lot of stuff here.
guess I don't have a keyboard plugged in right now, so. Some of it a bit underexposed, which um, I think at concerts, honestly, is, is probably better than than overexposing, because at least with a pocket camera, because you guys, because uh, you end up getting a lot of weird shifts if you don't, or like motion blur. Digital, but this is silver photography, right? Uh, I mean, so uh, I shoot digital. Let's switch back here.
Oh, you guys aren't supposed to see that. No, that's fine. I was looking for, <laughs> you guys can see what I was searching in my own Discord here. Um, I was looking for Bliss, because I owe Bliss a, a prize item. Anyways, Young Hot Ebony by uh, Father. Oh, I don't know why I did this. I could just do the...
Tosh Sultana Notion EP. I actually have this signed, so you can take a look at it.
interesting. All right, here we go. Lurk Timoteau, thank you for the lurk. Appreciate it. Okay, so here's our situation. Um, first of all, we worked on the um, the acrylic plate for the MX tray mount, right? And I think there were a couple things here that's problematic. Um, uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys consider acrylic to be like soft or flexy? Just out of curiosity. Like, I'm not sure what your guys' opinion is. Where, yes, weren't, weren't you going to change some stabilizer cutouts? Y yes. That was one part of a of a task here, um, was to adjust the stabilizer cutouts of, of presumably these two plates. Now, at the same time, I kind of wonder how necessary this is going to be. Never typed on acrylic. 2-1, welcome back. Fragile. <laughs> Fragile is how you consider but would you consider it Okay, brittle, fragile. I, I hear you guys, but would you guys consider it soft or hard? <laughs> Flexy or stiff? Because here's what I'm seeing. Um, I have typically done this thing, so I, I think I have it written here in these, uh, these notes. Um, softer materials for higher kerf values and harder materials for lower values. Flexier than metal, but like not too much. It's stiff in terms, uh, in terms of plastics. Okay, so so check this out. I'll use softer materials uh, for for higher curve values. So point two, like generally, like I do this in like you know thin Alps, like soft materials. Um, right here, I've done this with like task board. Right, I've I've cut this in acrylic too. I you know unfortunately this didn't turn out super the way I wanted it to be because the idea of a of a higher curve um, is like. The higher number you go on kerf, um, the more like quote unquote like accurate your cutout's supposed to be, um, because there's like uh, the way that I try to think about it is that like the way that the laser hits the actual surface of the material is that it accommodates for like a 0.2 millimeter or a kerf amount of extra space. So you want to actually like design the cutouts to be a little bit smaller. Am I sure? Oh shit! I'm sharing the wrong screen, aren't I? <laughs> uh, my bad. That is one. I think this is supposed to be one. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry, wrong screen. Sinvec, thank you. Uh, Moon operator, thank you. I realize that might have not made any sense. <laughs> Whereas you guys probably have seen a bunch of stuff here that I might not have been wanting to show off here. <laughs> okay. So, um, the idea is like the higher curve you go for, you know, here, here are the two tray Alps. Um, but, but I think maybe one thing I might have to do is like just have variants, multiple variants here. But anyways, um, the higher the curve you go, the smaller your actual design cutouts are supposed to be, um, because the laser, like the laser, is supposed to accommodate for like when it actually makes the cutout. Like, there's gonna be that much much extra wiggle room because like due to the laser itself. Um, <clears throat> so with that said, one problem I had was this high curve value I thought would be okay with acrylic. But we ended up having like a lot of trouble trying to push the plate through um, to, to get the, uh, the actual stabilizer housings through the plate. <laughs> and then we ended up pushing the, the, the plate so hard that it actually cracked a little. And that's, that's the brittleness you guys are talking about, right? Um, and so I'm thinking that like one way or another, I, I think that the plate just needed the stabilizer cutouts to be bigger. Like, it doesn't even need to be that the curve for every cutout needs to be adjusted. Um, the thing is, maybe just the stabilizer cutouts, stabilizer cutouts just need to be bigger. Like, you don't even like I don't even need to change the switch cutouts. Send noodles. Some places don't want curve corrected files like P3D Store. That's interesting. I I, I haven't used P3D Store before. I, I do all my cutouts through Pinoco. Um, I've done some cutouts through, or some some laser cutting through. 
I think it was, uh, I don't know, it had the word laser in it. There's a, there's a couple of services with the word laser in it. And um, the one I used was the was a less popular like service that had the word laser in it. Because I know there's one that's like a little bit more popular. Um, anyways, um, yeah, I'm thinking like maybe I should just sh I should just uh, uh, like adjust the stabilizer because like how what does it hurt to have your stabilizer cutouts be too big? Like, how does that uh like the switch cutouts obviously make a difference, but like what if your stabilizers were bigger? Like your your holes were just very big. Like it's not it's not really a big deal, right? <laughs> I don't know, just a just a thought I had. <laughs> docs or potentially docs uh, certain screens here. <laughs> okay, so so here are our play files. We have uh we we threw in I designed these like cool S's <laughs> near the space bars and like I was working really diligently to get them positioned just right and to to have them just be the right thickness. And I realized what I think was particularly useful for these cool S's <laughs> um, was um, when you go to Pinoco. Um, they let you choose like for individual shapes. They actually let you choose. Do you want this fully cut out or do you just want this like kind of like, like lasered in like the laser will only cut in like part of the way, but it won't actually like cut it out as a whole. And I think that worked out a little bit better because I, I was going to be a little bit worried as to what would happen with these guys. Um, just sort of like sticking out there, especially for like softer materials. Um, so, so Pinoco lets you do that where you can like, like shave, yeah, like etch it in. Sorry. I, I couldn't like the word wasn't coming to my brain. <laughs> I apologize. Sinvec. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyways. So one thing I was thinking was that like, because I ran this on acrylic with this, um, what I believe is a 0.2 kerf, a uh, 0.2 millimeter kerf. It's just like, well, why not just make this like way bigger? What do you guys think of that? Like you just make it like super big. It's about five. All right, so um, for anyone who is unfamiliar, um, I do all my plate file modifications in Illustrator, um, primarily because I don't know how to use other CAD software and I'm familiar with how, how Illustrator works. <laughs> and I think like in terms of what I need to get out of like what you can do precision wise in Illustrator, it, it suffices for me. Um, by the way, guys, it looks like Zaku won. So I guess we're gonna run Zaku's on this Pandora uh, next time around. Uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see if I could finish them before uh, Thursday's stream. Um, if I don't, then you guys will see the Z uh, Zaku's right in front. How do you measure an Illustrator? So. Um, I don't know if you guys, it's probably like not super easy to see, but over here in this corner, um, there's this like trans, uh, yeah, there's this transform, uh, pane here that lets you just punch in like, okay, this thing that you're pointing at, whether it's a shape or a point or a line, like where, where does it lie? Um, 
like from an X and Y like coordinate standpoint and how wide or, or tall is it so oh guys Ada's here <laughs> how do you measure an illustrator units and stuff so um this can be deterred like for specifically for um like svgs like you're gonna be like managing this like you know in kind of whatever like units you choose like I have this written already into to millimeters. So like this makes a bit more sense, I think, from the standpoint of like keyboard measurements as one might already know them, I think. Um, when you um, are able to like import like other files like DXF files, um, you can then choose like how the units uh, like a, like scale. Like there's like a translation process as you import them. I, I guess I could like show that off here if you guys care to see it. So like. Um, yeah, like as, as soon as I just drag it in, it tells you like, can you, do you want to scale this is, is like a one equal, like the one unit equal to a millimeter. And I think that's generally how, how it is. Um, so, but we're not going to open that. That's a, that's a different, I, I think that's like an older play file. I'm not going to mess with it. Okay. Um, so, uh, I get the DXF part, but I never knew illustrator could translate units. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty chill. So, um, like even if you just have like an SVG, um, like I think if you just go to uh, edit preferences units, um, you can show this off like in millimeters. And so if you have a plate file that you don't think is scaled correctly, I mean you could just you could just do this. And like even then, like you don't even have to, you don't even have to choose the the units here. Um, like if if I were to choose like something else here, if I wanted to choose pixels or points or picas or whatever, um, I'm pretty sure that if you still type you know, your value here in millimeters, it'll automatically just change it for you. So, um, as long as you're resizing from center and not off of a different point, that makes sense, that makes sense. Okay, so um, one thing that Pinoco asks for, which like sometimes you, you literally can't do f through Pinoco, but Pinoco will sometimes ask for, um, uh, your cutouts need to be at least like, I think uh, your, material thickness distance away from an edge um so let's let's check that out right like the idea is um right here my y coordinate of some of the bottom most uh, things here this is going to be about and i realize this guy this might be kind of tiny on screen i'm hoping well i can just i can just say it out loud this looks to be 98.637 on the coordinate plane of this uh of this canvas uh, or this artboard uh whoa what I just do. Uh, meanwhile, uh, when I go down to this corner here, this is about 100.118. So um, that gives us a little bit of wiggle room, right? Um, this can grow or this can shift downwards by about like a millimeter and a half, meaning we could probably expand this whole, like this whole object, like Moon Operator saying, we then have to click this this button for the reference point to be here. And then from here, we can, uh, I guess we'd, uh, uh, we can make it proportional. I guess that that makes sense. Um, just, just increase this until we think it's like, okay, you know? Um, which I think like we can get up to probably like at least 17 millimeters. So from this point here, if I look now at the bottom, it's about 99.146. Okay, I don't think I was supposed to go that big, but we could probably like shift this up to like 16.8. Ah, uh, we did that from the wrong reference point. My bad, my bad. Sorry about that, guys. Let's go 16.8 right here. Also, I think I need to flip that vinyl, don't I? And now when we look at this, uh, the bottom point here of this shape, we're at 99.046, uh, which I believe is a comfortable distance here, about a little, like a shade over one millimeter um, far from the bottom. So then I can just like kind of do this and then do the same thing for the other stabilizer down here. Um, and then set this reference point to the middle, keep that constrained, and we can, we can change this to 16.8 as well. Okay. Um, let me flip this. Let me know what you guys think of what I'm doing. Like, to me, this makes sense in my brain. But let me know if you guys think that this is entirely idiotic.
Okay. So, um, that does it for the spacebar stabilizers, but um, the ones I think in real question here, <laughs> you guys will see this shortly, but um, the ones uh, really in question would be these guys that have also caused uh, some problems here and there. So, let us also shift this up. Is that playing? All right. Let's shift this up um, from the center, as well as this guy also from the center. Oops. And then what ends up happening here is exactly this thing I've mentioned, and, and that's kind of what I, I spoiled on the right side here. Um, this is likely just too close. Like, it's just too close to uh, this edge right here. Um, so what I typically will do from here is, because this is a tray mount plate, right? Like, this is what this cutout on the edge here is for. Um, what I'll do is, like, I'll push back from the necessary inside cutouts. Um, the same, like, almost like the, the type of radius that I need. Uh, <laughs> and then you have your, you end up having these, like, um, tray mount screw holes just end up looking really ridiculous. And that's, that's what I was kind of trying to spoil, or wasn't trying to spoil here on this side. <laughs> um, a function key right here on, like, a, a split right shift layout means that this tray mount cutout to, to get that one millimeter buffer needs to sort of curve in this way. <laughs> and then same thing here for this stabilizer right here is just like, I needed that that rounded one millimeter radius buffer from this corner. This is crazy. No, I know this looks stupid as shit, but it's just like, it's kind of funny like that this is like the constraint that Pinoco gives you. And then like, it still like works, you know? <laughs> it just looks stupid. I know. <laughs> Um, so, and then the same thing is going to happen here, right? Like I'm going to expand this guy, uh, uh to 16.8. And then like, I'm going to need to like, you know, carve out more from, from this too. It's, it's going to look goofy. I know. Okay. Um, so how do I do that? Um, so typically what I have done, what have I done before? Um, what I do is I grab this ellipse tool and then what I do is, so uh, this is the tricky part. Um, what I actually wanna do is uh, intersect like a hard corner here to this this very point. <laughs> and then we're, we're just going to use this as a placeholder because the rounded corner doesn't tell you where, where this point really is. And that's going to like really affect where the rounded corner is in, in regards to the, the radius that we'll need, right? And this will give us a little bit of extra buffer just in case. Uh, meanwhile, what I'll do is I'll take this ellipse shape. Um, and what I'll do is I believe I need just like a one. No, I need a two millimeter. Uh, th these, these are for diameters. Um, so a one millimeter radius is a two millimeter diameter. Um, I take this guy and then this center point is supposed to go right there, um, intersecting like this, this, uh, makeshift, uh, shape we made right here. Right. And then from this point, I can take that shape that we just made, uh, as well as, um, the actual full entire, you're taking the computer aided out of CAD. Now it's just design. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I've never, I don't know anything about CAD. <laughs> but what I do is I go up here to the Pathfinder, and then one of these Pathfinder guys is actually going to do exactly what I want it to do. Um, I believe I need to do a Unite. And so this is this is exactly what I end up needing right here. Um, then pretty much from this point, um, I need to ensure that, uh, like, from this edge right here that I uh, actually, you know what I'll do is, um, I'll, I'll make it like a one millimeter by, I don't know, two millimeter rectangle here. Um, and then I'll intersect this like so, just about like that. And then right here, like it's, I guess it's kind of almost the same thing. Um, would I unite? Oh. Uh, wrong button. So that's something goofy that looks like this. I realize I think I'm supposed to shift this to be something like that. 
There you go. <laughs> Funny part is Illustrator is a great CAD tool. I'm a disagree. <laughs> okay, so that is our screw cut out now at <laughs> this stage. I don't know. This looks like uh, what does this look like? It looks like it looks like a a mouse took a bite out of the plate, or it looks like a it looks like a state border in the Midwest. I don't know. Chris, can I suggest a different strategy that might be easier? Sure, <laughs> you can suggest it, but I always like this one. This one's fun and funny, <laughs> but feel free to suggest it. It's a lot more intuitive for 3D design. It is only... <laughs> yes, it is. Uh -huh. Okay. So we'll unite these guys. And then uh, I'll delete this. Uh, we'll do one millimeter. The height's fine. And then I guess I unite this. There we go. Oh, that looks really yucky, doesn't it? I think I was, <laughs> I was supposed to meet it in a different way. But whatever, it's fine. Oh, that still looks really funky. Let's see if we can move this. Oh no, 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 no. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, it's supposed to stay on that plane. Oh, does that meet? Okay, okay, okay. I think that meets now. Boom, there we go. Oh, beautiful. Okay, copy the stabilizer shape, paste it in place, make a border one millimeter clearance, then you need to outline the stroke, then use a pathfinder to unite the two objects. Uh, I, I see what you're saying. Um, so in doing that, uh, okay. Make the border the one millimeter clearance that you use to... So I think what you're saying is this. Um, I can give it exactly one, for example, like for this guy right here. Um, okay, wait, 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 one at a time. Let me, let, I want to reread your message so I fully, fully understand it because I got I to gotta spin it in my mind. Tinvec, that's actually genius. <laughs> Okay, let's let's do that. Okay, let, let's let's actually do that. I like that idea. So we didn't even need to do that, right? Uh, what we could have done instead was your idea. We'll take this, um, paste it in place, and then I'll make this one. Oh, how? Okay, so that I think that's the hard part. The hard part is trying to figure out how do I know that I'm one millimeter away from like this entire edge. You probably need to double the stroke because half the stroke will be inside the shape, but it's the same math you were doing. Oh, uh, let me think about that. Hmm. <laughs> I see. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's see. So what I'll do then is if I increase this, how much do I need to increase this by? The height and width. Uh, well, the width I would need to increase by two. Is that right? 
Oh shit, what did I do? Oh, that was idiotic. Hold on, my bad. That needs to be nine. I need to increase this to nine. I'm not supposed to constrain it. Okay, 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 okay. We're, we're gonna get this. We're gonna get this brilliant methodology. Like that. So you're saying I should just do this. <laughs> Make the stroke thickness two millimeters? Uh. I think the idea is that my stroke alignment should be on the inside. Wait, do I still have that? Oh, I don't have that copy still. Um, okay. Then at this point, increase this to, to 9 and 18. Uh, well, that doesn't actually really matter, does it? Because it's still the same path, it's just the stroke, whatever. Okay. I think that that method is a lot more genius. <laughs> Why the hell have I never done that before? <laughs> okay, these bottom ones though. Um, these bottom ones though, there's like a, just a slight air of like a little tiny bit of inaccuracy there, but it's like totally fine. Um, the idea here being... Um, this is 118 at the bottom. Uh, I would want this to be like 9918, but 99.082 is close enough. I I feel like we're splitting hairs at that point, I, I think. Um, but I think largely, you might have been right. I wish I had illustrated I could uh, record a video of doing this. <laughs> I, I, th I think what I've done accomplishes the same thing. Now you can correct me if I'm wrong, but but I think we're like still, we're largely close here. I think seven back means to keep the original size, but just change the stroke to two millimeters. On the outside, then click object path outline stroke to convert the stroke to object. I mean, we could still play with this. Uh, let's see. Keep the original size, change the, okay, okay. So align, what we'll do is we'll align the stroke to the outside uh, and then We've already we already did it for this guy, right? But let's just let's just do it anyways. You're saying if you make this two, uh, two millimeters. <laughs> Is this how thick it's supposed to be? No, it's supposed to be one millimeter. My bad, my bad. This is supposed to be one millimeter. This is what the cutout's supposed to look like, and so I actually carved out too much, huh? Cause now you could do yeah object uh what is it uh path where is this path path outline stroke so then this guy is what you would join oh shit wait you need to like uh what you need to do you need to like um unlink these what's the like is it like make compound path make so this guy is supposed to go back to like 0.423 or whatever right oh it's still com wait it's still combined does this will this do it ah control shift g okay that's right what the fuck? Uncombine yourself. <laughs> Good lord. All right. This is supposed to be like not this. And meanwhile, this guy will flip that. And that's supposed to be 0.423. And then this outside shape, this is what gets made. Okay. All right. 
I see what you're saying. Okay, that that one is also actually a pretty good idea too. Uh, and on top of that, I may have just carved too much. So, uh, how do you revert? How, let's, should we revert all the way backwards? Let's do this. Let's revert. Let's start all over. Let's do it all over again. Okay. So, what I want to do is let's re... Let's re-increase this. I don't know. Let's try a 16.85. Does 16.85 get us to 118 or is that too much? Oh shit. Uh, I'm supposed to do that. We did 16.8, right? Do 16.8. God damn. Damn, bro. Sixteen point eight five. Now the bottom is at nine nine zero seven one. I feel like that's less than it was before. Am I nuts? How far back did I revert? <laughs> uh. When your size, you can also add plus one to the text box and it does the math. Um, what I want to do is increase the size so that it's at the... I want to... Using the middle as a reference point, I want the bottom to hit a certain number while constraining the proportions of the stabilizer cutout. I don't think it's smart enough to do this dumbass thing that I want to do. <laughs> Like, I, I think the plus one makes sense if you're just trying to shift it, like, one way or another, or do one thing or another, right? Um, but this this roundabout way I'm trying to go about doing this thing is, like, I think it's a little too much. <laughs> okay, 16.95 is too much. What about 9.4? All right, perfect, 16.94. Everything gets 16.94 instead. So that bottom. Bro, am I crazy? It's like, is this not aligned? Was this never aligned? Oh, you gotta be shitting me, bro. Hold up. Let's start all over. Yeah, this shit was never aligned from before. <laughs> that could be a problem. Um, 90.682, 90.682. Alright, this is like just off. Point eight seven. Hello? Yo. Hey. What's going on? Hey, what's up, buddy? Dude, I'm on stream right now. Oh, you are? Let yeah. Me, me... I'm using Illustrator. Oh, cool. <laughs> guys, er guys, everybody, welcome Andrew, my co-host. The seldom <laughs> seen co-host of, uh, of Crack oh, City man. here. <laughs> 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 I have to watch this ad. Pull out my ruler tools. Ruler would probably be way helpful, wouldn't it? I'm getting a Adidas ad on your on your website right now on your Twitch. Sick. Did you do you get to choose? Oh, sick! I see what you're making. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a keyboard <laughs> plate. Cool. Yeah, there's a keyboard plate, and there's a couple of cool S cutouts inside of it. Oh, are you going to customize? Yeah, I could get this plate, like, laser cut. Wow. <laughs> All right. Incredible. 
So we came up with, I, I realized I was doing, this thing I've been doing for the longest time is fun, but really stupid. So um, a couple people in chat here, uh, between uh, Sinvec, Moon Operator, uh, 2-1, everybody in chat here has been helping me less make this process slightly less stupid. Why is it stupid? I was doing a lot of just like goofy things of just like makeshift shapes. <laughs> uh, what I'm trying to do is, um, so I'm designing like, you know, this is essentially a giant like, you know, grouping of outlines, right? Um, this is eventually supposed to get laser cut. And the idea is that like, there's with this thing I'm trying to get laser cut, there's like, you know, the very edges of it, the inner cutouts have to be a minimum of one millimeter away from them. And then like Sinvec and moon operator here have come up with way smarter ways to do that than the dumb ways that I've done it before. <laughs> so. Let's do this. All right. The idea is we uh, we do a line stroke to outside. Then we set this to two. And then we go to object path uh, outline stroke. And then I believe we ungroup the stroke, which just shows that it's a compound path. Then I go to compound path and I guess I release it. Then I flip this and I flip this. Hmm. Then I take this, I'll put it back to whatever it was before. I think it was 0 0.423, 0 0.402. Are these like all different? These are all different widths. <laughs> Stupid. Okay. Um, then I take these two guys. And then I Pathfinder join these. And now I have that smooth cutout. The smoothest. Ooh. Oh, Andy's in chat. Walkie slush. <laughs> Walkie slush. <laughs> Andy, right. join, join. We need another co host, man. Andy, get your ass in here. Get your. Get your dumb ass in here. I thought this was, I thought this was FF. <laughs> family friendly. It was only family friendly when we had kids in it. <laughs> Is this a NSFW stream? <laughs> like literally only when we had that, like, I don't know, that, that kid who was clearly 10 years old. Yeah, he started like cussing. The kid it's was like, very whoa. clearly ten years old and saying all this crazy stuff. We kept trying to mute him. Yeah, we kept trying like, to oh silence him. <laughs> he he was like playing like Pokemon or something. I think it was or Splatoon. Probably. We were playing Splatoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So we do. Oh, did I? I think I put two. Oh, sh Nikes. I did the wrong thing. I'm, I'm oh. just going to say it once, but uh, we're doing playoff brackets right now. Ooh. Who you got? Yeah. Um, I, I, need, to, I need to do some research. Uh, I'm not too familiar. familiar. You're not too yeah. familiar? With, with like, like uh, all the matchups. Yeah. Uh. Like especially, I have to start with the play-ins, and I'm with the play-in tournament. Like I, I don't know all the teams. Um, I need to look at the makeup of all the teams and how they match up and stuff, how they did throughout the season and stuff. I see. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's see, what am I doing next? I got to... Where are you going to get this laser cutted? Walkie slush. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a laser service that I think a lot of people use. It's actually, it's interesting. A lot of people use it, but it turns out it's based in Oakland, so it's super close. They take long to do it, but I mean, I think it makes sense. 
but once they do it, it ships really fast. <laughs> mm. I mean, does size matter or like, does it cost? How just, much does it cost? I think it's just like overhead costs, like a time mm. overhead. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oops. Oh, shit. Wrong thing. What the hell did I do? Oh, we good, we good, we good, we good. Nice, okay. <clears throat> if all the 2U stabilizer cutouts are the same, can't you copy and paste it to the other side? I have no idea what's going on in Illustrator, though. Finding this hilarious. <laughs> Basically, so, if, uh, is Andy still here? Andy and Andrew, the, the no. situation that's happening is I'm trying to do CAD without CAD software. Just... Instead of computer-aided design, I'm just doing design for actual CAD work. That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, like that. like, that's, that's nice. <laughs> Whenever it says, regenerate the plate using the large stabilizer cutout and port over your S. So, I think... I, I've used the... Oops, the um, the AIO3 plate generator before. And I think there are things about it that are helpful. Um, but I think it's always like whenever I look at it, I feel like the way that I work to design plates, whenever I look at like what AIO3 spits out, I just look at it like it's a guideline more so than anything else. Mm. So I can, hmm. and I think it's going to be helpful. I think they, they do 3U, right? 3U stabilizers. And that's something that I wanted to look at next. Man. Oh, shit. Oh, I don't shit. quite understand it, what you're talking about. Oh, uh, there's a... So this is a keyboard plate. And like, there's like a pretty like standard spacing between keys, and there's a pretty standardized like formulation of what like a, a typical keyboard, at least in a layout I like, looks like. And so there are these mm -hmm. like generators that like spit out like what the general layout's supposed to be. Then you just kind of have to form fit it to what what it is you want to do. Um, so this right here is just like I'm trying to form fit this to like a pretty basic type of keyboard. Uh, but in the way that I want to use it. And one Why of those things that makes this plate me is the addition of the cool S's. <laughs> <laughs> Why do keyboards have to be like, you know, like all squares, you know? Oh, they don't have to be. Uh, it's just, it just makes the most sense. <laughs> Why can't they be like triangles, you know? Uh oh, you should take a look. There's this um there's this keyboard called the beak. The beak? Yeah. I'll check that out right now. Yeah, hold on. I'll I'll just I'll send a link in the Twitch chat. Uh why aren't there cool S's on the sides that are getting blocked? Uh I've done that before for the FR four plate where I had like one cool S right here, but I kind of wanted like more symmetry and I felt like uh, the cool S's on the sides, I don't know, I felt like they'd be like a little too loud. So I, I wanted like a more of a subtle, a subtle cool S effect. <laughs> so anyways, uh, Andrew, I just pasted in chat this geek hack thing for, for this keyboard called the Beak. Let's take a look. All right, what am I doing? Okay. Objects. I I mean, it still looks like a keyboard. I mean, that <laughs> circle thing is pretty cool. Like, I'm still disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not. It's no it has triangle. A triangle in it. Yeah, it's not like pure triangle. Yeah. Does anyone uh does anyone see any like or any anyone know of these uh, crazy crazy designed uh, keyboards? I know that there's um. I think it was called the zigzag. Yeah, I'm I'm actually drawing a a, a keyboard right now that I think will be like kind of cool. Oh, zigzag. Okay. Ooh, this is interesting. All right, look at this spiky boy. 
I was trying to look for the zigzag, but I found the spiky boy instead. I mean, that's pretty cool, but I'm just talking about like the keys, you know? Oh, the keys? Oh. Oh, you're talking about the yeah, actual, uh, like, the keycap shapes? Yeah, it could be triangles. Oh, I thought you were talking about the keyboard shape. But anyways, look at the thing. I like, <laughs> two one and myself and all hex all sent different things. But feel free to click on this. I think the spiky is boy it? is interesting. It, it does look pretty cool. <laughs> the Gengar. All right, what am I doing now? I need to... Compound path release. Flip that. I'm gonna set this back to 0.424. Shit, did I do the right thing? I feel like I, I keep doing this like too brainlessly. I think I did. That came out to be. Hold on, let me just check this. One. Yep. Okay. 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 We good. We good. All right. Pathfinder. Boom. There we go. Oh my gosh. You guys, Synvec, Moon Operator, 2-1, you guys are brilliant. We got some real geniuses in chat tonight. What's that one keyboard Hi. that's just rotary encoders? <laughs> that's what Andrew wants. I don't actually, I'm not sure if I've seen that one. That, that one's crazy. Or like that idea is crazy. Okay. So I think we're good here. All right, I think I need to potentially make the same updates here uh, for um, the Alps version. But I think this one might get a little dicey too. Also, that looks a little funny, doesn't it? Is that, that's not straight. What the heck? This is not even straight. Yeah, that X value is not even the same. What the heck? Are these crooked? Have I never noticed that these cutouts are crooked? Well, Chris, I'm going to send you something. All right. Where are you sending it? Twitch or Discord uh, or what? On Discord, yeah. Okay. Like this. This would be like, re like revolutionary. <laughs> All right, let me let me share this with the uh, stream. Oh, right. it's not showing up. No, no, I it's know. Yeah, give me give me one second. This is what Andrew has sent. Andrew it's wants this up. keyboard. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Dang, I should get this tattooed along with that cool S man. <laughs> it's all triangles. <laughs> <laughs> this is the future. <laughs> My brain hurts. That would mean you have to relearn <laughs> touch typing. <laughs> Reminds me, oh, it's more efficient. Moon over, reminds me of those three-way highlighters they give out at conferences. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So good. Alright, so stupidly enough, I have just discovered here that I don't think these are straight. Is this one straight? Oh, oh, 003. Oh, this one is straight. This one's crooked. These stabilizer cutouts are crooked on this Alps wood. Why? Okay, just that left one so far. Back to school shopping, kind of how when your dad comes back from an <laughs> Oh, so good. 201648, wait. How long has this music not been playing? All right, well, that vinyl's uh, finished. So if anyone wants to redeem, feel free to redeem a, uh, a vinyl play. Until then, we'll go back to our regu regularly scheduled uh, playlist here. Okay, here we go. So that'd be two oh one six four eight. Okay, for some reason, 
it's only just the left. playlist. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I guess I should share this playlist or something. I, I sometimes will play different playlists on different days. 883, 883. Okay, so these seem to be fine. But I mean, what does fine really mean? Because it's not that fine. All right, is the square? My question is, is the square straight? It is. All right, and then what's the center point? The center point is 264, hey, uh, Andrew, remember these numbers for me. Oh, okay. 26405 and 71667. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, never mind. You don't have to remember it. It it pretty much just did itself. <laughs> oh, man. Like, oh, that was a waste. <laughs> that was a waste of my memory. Oh, do you have new um, emotes? I have a couple of new emotes. <laughs> All X, thank you. All right, yes, that is my uh, that's my vinyl collection. If anyone wants to redeem vinyl plays. All right, but watch this bullshit. I, are my plates so misaligned? Why is everything so not in the right spot? I feel like I use the um, the swill builder and sometimes it spits out numbers that are like not, like they're not all exact. Look at this, the center here is 682 and this one is 717. And this one is seven five two. Like what the what is this? It's a mess. Alright, we're just gonna try to crank this out real fast. Hold up, what is this? This whole thing is 717, that's crazy, dude. Is snap fit or whatever enabled? It shouldn't be. Um, you know, part of me, it, it doesn't make sense. Um, part of me is thinking that I, uh, I think it's what's happening even though logically it doesn't make sense. Um, the Alps uh, cutouts, like from the, the generator that I used might be like, they all they align differently for what I think is no reason. I don't agree with it, but I think that that's what's happening. Oh shit. Mm. Ninety-nine. Okay, let's do sixteen six for all of these instead. Okay. Now we can go back to doing our dumb thing here. We will stroke this by one millimeter, set that to the outside. Path, outline stroke. Uh, is it just release? Do I, I didn't even need to ungroup, do I? Set this back to whatever this was, 0.414, whatever and then unite these.
Yep. Clean. Bro, you guys are genius. You guys are geniuses. Might be when the DXF... You know, that's true. You know what it might be? Because, like, um... It's not the DXF that imported, necessarily. What I think it is, is, um... Uh, Swill's generator probably, like, builds the DXF. And then, like, also does an SVG conversion, if an SVG is what you want. And then maybe that's where, like, the issue comes up. Perhaps. Um, I don't know, though. Who even knows? No one knows. Oh shit, what the fuck? All right, here we go. All right, oh, what the? I didn't want it that thick though. <laughs> it just makes the whole, the whole outline like thick. Didn't do that here. Okay. All right. Cool. That's chill, everybody. We finished up adjusting these stabilizer cutouts. Now, what does that mean? That means that it should be agnostic of the kerf. Like, I mean, I can just like upload both of these uh, all the way back up. The, the, the thing that I'm thinking about is that like, how many of these do I need to adjust? Like, I have this like Trey Alps 6.25U that I don't think anyone in this universe should use. Uh, meanwhile, you have these Sirius and these uh, J02 ones. Um, I think that, I don't know, this this was kind of tight, but whatever. Um, I think it was tight on the switches. But I don't know, whatever. I don't even need to make these adjustments. I don't really care. <laughs> what I would rather do is try to figure out at this point now what should I do for a 3U build? I have way too many serious plates. Should I still do a 3U build in a serious? Or should I do it in a tray? Or should I find, do you guys have any other ideas of a board I could do 3U in? Um, that I own. Like, I, I think I have very few, like, extra PCBs, so it's just, like, I'd have to just be, like, wasting plates by this point. But let's take a look at my collection, yeah? Oh, I think I should... Whoa, where'd my cursor go? Oh. Oh, I can't hard reset. Oh, you have a... You have a web... Site? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I have my whole collection on here. <clears throat> Technically, I, I feel like having this collection up here means I could probably get beat up and robbed. <laughs> but come at me. All right, anyways, what do you guys want to see for a 3U build that have plates available? Chris? Yo, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, I was dealing with some bad connection. Ah. I was just checking out your website. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Wow, the Meridian looks wild. Oh, it does look cool, but I I didn't actually like using it. Uh -huh. Not more than the uh, the B Mac. Your favorite is the B Mac. BMAC is up there, but you know, it still still needs work. What's your favorite out of all of these? Ooh, I don't know. Sometimes it's just like the most mm. recent one is my favorite. <laughs> that makes sense. Um like I don't know, I like this one the that I'm using right now. The K? The walnut wrist the walnut wrist rest is like gorgeous. <laughs> it's like super cheap. <laughs> like compared is to it all really? the others. Like compared to all the others. There's like it's um the mounting style is like it, 
it's the construction of it is um, like like when you actually like use the keyboard and like put the keyboard together is a way that like a lot of people generally don't like um it's a very easy um like it's easy for them to design it the way that they did but even then the way that they designed it like the measurements are off <laughs> so it was like really hard to build yeah Allowed, brother. Welcome back. Uh, is the Keychron on order? Um, I haven't ordered it yet. I feel like I should just get my my order in, so that way, like their numbers will be boosted up, so the group buy can finish. But I should. EJZX, welcome, welcome. But I did see the Q60. I'm interested in the Q60. My my only issue, real issue with the Q60, is the fact that it doesn't come with a solder PCB. I'd rather use a solder PCB. Okay, um, all right, so the question is, what should I use 3U on? Um, all right, so here's, here's the thing that I'll say about 3U. I have a bunch of uh, things on group by, like still waiting, um, key sets specifically that have 3U compatibility. Otherwise, right now, the only real thing I have that has 3U compatibility is um, nuclear data. Um, I'm going to try to go in on redacted tomorrow. Uh, hey, so was the was the Walnut Wrist Rest cheap? Like, how cheap was it? Like, by comparison, compared to the others, it's cheaper. Um, the actual, the Wrist Rest, like, case um, itself was, I, I could Google it. I could just look at it. Um, give you fans walnut 60 about 70 bucks for the case but then like you need all the other parts yeah like by comparison like just like a lot of these other metal cases they'll typically be like in the hundreds several hundreds the small the small fry looks really good too oh that's another one that was cheap but it was it's a really cool <laughs> idea what they did um and like it's it's a little bit older too um, i like how you put the the escape button is it, or I think is the escape button. Is, yeah. I don't know. That's the wiggly line button is like really cool. That's the Animal Crossing fossil. Oh my gosh, that's so flavorful. Yeah, and this is supposed to be like Animal Crossing, like a, like an island key set, where it's like you know the that Animal Crossing uh, limited edition Switch. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, those are like Joy-Con colors. Gosh, it looks really great. Yeah, and then like I'm so the... sorry, I cut, I cut, I cut you off. You were, you were saying something. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I forgot. But wait, I still want to go on this. The, um, the actual case itself, that blue is like literally like when you look at it in person, at least, is right in between that green and that blue. <laughs> so it's like kind of cool. Um, a loud brother says, Whoa. I love the checkerboards PCBs. They have tons of, th yes, that, that was the thing too. Uh, like I, I had just discovered this, um, like checkerboards, uh, in like February and they, they actually have like non or like non ortho PCBs that have three U space bar compatibility. And they have like such little like Swiss cheese on those PCBs. I, I think in my opinion, I think it's a DZ 60 killer. Like, it's only, like, what, like, seven bucks more? <laughs> Crazy. Uh, Trio 60 is not plateless. Trio 60 is, uh, is a gasket mount. Uh, Allah, brother, do you have any affiliate links slash coupon codes with any vendors? I do not. Um, I'm completely unsponsored, except by All Hex. All Hex donates a bunch of, uh, <laughs> All Hex donates a bunch of artisans for giveaway. Um... But uh, other than That's that, cool. no, I, I don't work with any vendors at the moment. So. Dang. Yeah. Uh, I, it's kind of by choice. Hey, the balder? Yeah. Uh, I can't click the photo. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have a bunch for which, like, I, I don't have photos for them yet, so you can't really click on them to, to um, do anything. Chris is the best free agent in the, in the community. <laughs> I agree. I mean, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm signed to all hex. <laughs> <laughs> all hex just donates all these uh, artisans here, and I don't know. I just I plug is all, all hex. <laughs> is all is all hex like 
in the keyboard community are they like the leaning of like keyboards leaning <laughs> was that the or shoe company like, yeah or are they like the or are they like <laughs> like adidas i know all hex is like a homie <laughs> oh it's just one dude yeah all hex is just a homie <laughs> oh okay yeah i don't know like it would be like uh it would be like if a uh, big baller brand had no marketing and also didn't produce anything. <laughs> you know, you know, big baller brand, their shoes are um, uh, brand black shoes. Oh, I thought I thought I remember hearing one time at one point it was like Skechers. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're brand black. Yeah. At some point they were Skechers. <laughs> Kermit Omega, welcome to the stream. I don't have a mouse pad uh, command here. I apologize for that. But this is a, um, this this desk mat is, uh, I forget what, what the actual product name is, but it's from Archetype. Mm. It's very cool that someone is impartial that way. Um, it's, it's, you know what? Like, I realize it's pretty goofy. It's that, like, part of me is like, no, I want to be able to say whatever it is I want about, like, the products that I have in hand. But at the same time, even though that's the case, it's like I'm still just like nice about it. <laughs> like, like I don't know. I, I typically don't shit on anything. So, all right. Uh, oh, nice. I just built a custom keyboard not too long ago. It's a laser colorway of the KBD67. Right on. Right on. Uh, don't stop until Chris has to sleep in the bathroom because his living room is filled with HKBs. Man, I'm, I'm I'm losing space, man. I'm losing space. Okay. Um. I'm gonna go in on GMK Redacted tomorrow, um, but I know that like basically I need to buy two spacebar kits if I want the double three U compatibility, and that disappoints me, uh, to say the least. Um, I do have nuclear data, and then I do have a bunch in group buy, but I, you know I'm not gonna see these for like a long time. Um, let me see. I do have Geek Arc Triangle coming in, but I don't recall. If that one, let me see, Geek Arc Triangle. I don't think it has the two three U's in it. So it's like, I'd have to buy another kit, I think, as far as I remember. Still a sa sadly a month away. I mean, there are a lot of group buys that are cursed. <laughs> Let's see, let's see, what do I want to do? Okay, so, so here's the situation. Um, anything that has a standard 60% PCB is on the table. Um, the most interesting ones would then be the Sirius and the PH60, but I don't like the PH60 because there's, no, um, there's no hardware for the, um, like, like drilled into the polycarb for the plate screws. And um, I think I've already stripped one screw, so. PH60 is out. Sirius is the best contender, to be perfectly honest. The problem with my choice of Sirius is that, like, I have so many plates for it that, like, I already eventually think I'm going to have to build all these. And it's just like, do I need another one? Oh, my God, Andrew. Five gifted. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Andrew, you don't have to do that. Andrew's, Andrew's still even here. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, how do you pronounce that? X I L has cookies. Thank you for the follow. Um, and also everybody, Ada, Booty G K, Starfire Penguin, Carrie, and Peter Poppins, enjoy the subs. Enjoy the three best emotes on all of Twitch. The Falcon looked nice. So the Falcon's hard because I don't know that um, there's three U compatibility. There's no three U compatibility on that PCB. And I don't think the NOP60 is going to work with it. I haven't tried it, but I just, I doubt it. <laughs> like, I don't know. And I'm worried about, like, trying. I'm worried about trying because I'm worried about doing something that could damage the board. Oh, we got to hydrate. All right, let's, let's hydrate a little. Also, by the way, guys, at 900 followers, <laughs> what's up? Oh, that was 1,000 points. It's <laughs> just to watch you drink water. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, you should have saved that for a vinyl record play, but some people have points to burn. I know that you might not have oh. so many, but it's also a good reminder of me to be healthy. I think your redeem your, your redemption is for me to be healthy. Okay, yeah. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, man, 3,000. <000. Yeah. laughs> it's a stretch. Yeah, stress. No, the also the thing about like stretch and hydrate is like I make them so high because people will just spam them, and then I'm just drinking water nonstop. <laughs> vinyl I, choice. What is vinyl choice? You get to choose what vinyl for me to play out of the list of vinyls I have on Discogs. Is there any way I could buy points? <laughs> Clear piss is true bliss. Ain't that the truth? Uh, no, you just have to, you just have to stay lurking on my stream. Mm. <clears throat> All right, so series counts, but the other ones that count would be uh, for three U compatibility. Uh, just continuing this conversation. Anything with a standard like daughter board, like I guess that AIO three or that that universal daughter board. I don't know if the Trio sixty counts as one. Um, what would i think the y.6 would ooh the y.6 might work but deku deku didn't even have space bars though i think that's the disappointing part yeah there's no 3u on deku and that disappoints me Viper is non-standard. Uh, Switch Couture would work, but like, how interesting really is that? Balder would work, but I, I have that set up like a tray. And we already broke that, that plate. <laughs> uh, here's another standard, but I don't really want to do it on that one. Low Pro would work, but still don't really want to do it there. Concrete, no. K Mac Happy won't work. Alipow <sighs> Resin. Okay, let me also check what I have in Group I. Um, that'll work with 313. Um, I mean, CRP, I think I would have enough for. What else? Anything black. Dang, have you been streaming for four hours? Yeah, I have. Which I realize wow. is pretty long, huh? <laughs> Dang. I think I have Dual Shot 2. Dual Shot 2 whenever that comes in, so that's a really far way out. Bingsu R2. Um. Oh, yeah, and then everything is way further out, Purple Knights, so it's going to be a while. Do you, do you still play games on your stream? Sorry, it's been a while. Uh, I, I've kind of cooled off because I just know that like I have so much keyboard stuff I want to do. <laughs> uh, oh, I still play on cool. Tuesdays with uh, CST. I play with uh, mm. Alex, Anna, and Mark every Tuesday, and then Anna streams it. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Let's see. I don't know, guys. What do you guys think? I mean, I guess, I guess just, I guess just the serious. I mean, the serious probably it's it's a top mount. It's a top mount that takes the most regular one. the The other options I could think of, like, I mean, I guess would be like K. I could do the K, but I don't think nuclear data matches, um, or redacted really. Um, I could do. The J02, but same thing. I don't think either of them match super well. Mm. Song Geo 60. Could you get the plate cut and palm for Sirius? Uh, they do offer, Pinoco does offer palm, so I could. I already have like two palm plates. One is in Alps and one of them is in MX, <laughs> but I could. What do I want to do? T 
TX60 would be interesting if TX60 offers a plate design file or like the plate file. Is the TX60 PC constructed the same exact way as the, uh, the non-PC version? Does anyone know? TX60 plate file. Also, do they provide the play file? <laughs> I know that it won't work the, for the Polaris, but I also know that the Polaris is eventually supposed to have a round two with Ryu. And that's exciting. HB60, standard PCB, but we could do that one. Huh. Nah. Part of me would have wanted, what I would have wanted to do for that one is uh, Miss Dolch, uh, like uh, Miss Moto. Um, but it's like impossible to get through use space bars. They exist, but they're, they're impossible to get. I mean, I guess we'll do the serious. What, what else can we do, right? <laughs> serious K J zero two and then Trey. I think those are the main, the four main options. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save this as, no, not this one. Cause I think I'm gonna want it. Yeah, it's gonna have to be MX. Uh, 2022, what's today, 411? Investigate 411. <laughs> okay, so this this is gonna change a lot. All right, I remember PC load letter explained what the three uh, U was supposed to be. Thirty-eight point one one, or sorry, thirty-eight point one. But I, I think also. Um, the plate generator that uh, Moon Operator sent a little bit earlier might be able to generate those three U's as well. Uh, KB plate. I think that's my, that might have been what uh, what he said. Stabilizer. Is that true? Or am I crazy? Switch cutout types. I see, I need a KLE for this. Shit. All right. All right, cool guy. Look at this guy, thinks he's all tight. What are you looking at? Uh, I'm doing stuff off screen right now, but uh, maybe I should do it on screen, huh? Um, kbplay.ao3.com. So I have this. Oh, that's really weird. Why are the stabilizer cutouts so low on the generator? Am I crazy? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna go three. What up? Yo. Yo. What's up? What up? What's up? Aha. Uh -huh. I think that's what we want. Are you scanning the film? 
I was. Uh, I I had like a stoppage. Uh, a couple of my my rolls of film were a little bit, like I don't know. There's like some gunk on them, so I need to clean that off off stream. Uh, stop jerking off <laughs> your film. <laughs> Are you laughing? Uh, huh? What? What? Oh, it sounded like Andrew was uh, laughing. Yeah, I was laughing. Stop dripping off your film. Yeah. Got your keyboard and your film. Getting off to that. <laughs> One four seven eight eight four. Okay, I'm gonna copy this. I just got out of the studio. Very oh, cool. The studio, yes. eh? I just, I just got some mugs back. Oh, nice. Oh. Mug, you look like, like mug man, like dude. I only like three of them. Make six. One four seven seven nine six. Okay, so let me get rid of all this nonsense here. Andrew, what are you doing? Okay, so this ends up. Oh, uh, the cool S's have to disappear. And watching Chris. Damn. What? Did you go to the pottery, pottery barn? The pottery barn? Yeah. Well, <laughs> How often do you go to the pottery barn? I can't hear you. Yeah, Alex is not even saying anything. Every, uh, every day. <laughs> every day. If I'm not free, I try to... I don't know. It just depends on the week. Sure. So you have to like plan ahead for like three, like a three or four day block. So we call this what sixteen point eight seven for each one of these, huh? Oh shit! Oh, what the fuck? Okay. What's the commission you're working on, Andrew? Uh, this, um... This collector named, uh... Well... I'm not sure if he's a collector, but it's this dude named Jeffrey. Um, he's like a runner. He just Whoa. means like, yeah, and he like, his parents passed away, um, not together, but like recently. And he's just like kind of, he's kind of going through a lot, but he's, he likes my work and he wants me to do something that is kind of related to that, but not really. And, oh, there you know. Yeah. So that that's what that's all about. Very cool. Yeah, it's all right. 
seven, 16.87. Damn, I'm so hungry. Can't wait to get home. Seven point sure one one three. You should have got a what? Hester got me a Chipotle bowl. Oh, oh that's awesome. Is your no house all like set up now? Is my what? Or are you telling me Chris? Andrew, did your mm -hmm. you know, house all, like, set up now? And you're all, like, yeah. settled in? Yeah, I mean, like, it's definitely not as big as my studio before. It's basically my bedroom. And then, um, Wait, I, mean, did you I want to set up. I did, yeah. Oh, what the um, heck? During the pandemic, yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Wait, wait. You, not, you didn't move very, very recently. Did you? No. Okay, okay. A while ago. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I thought you moved, like, again. No, 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 no. Okay. Are you still doing, like, color pencil, or are you moving on to paint now? Still doing color pencil. And a little bit of paint, to be fair. Alright, we did this. I bet you'd be pretty sick at Microsoft Paint if you tried. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> you ever see like people that are crazy good at paint? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's really impressive. Hey, you can make an NFT. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Microsoft Paint? That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. The I think people like way. paint like Mona Lisa's in Microsoft Paint. That's okay. Not that cool. <laughs> what do we hey, say? there's no cool S's. I know. Yeah, it sucks. Um, this layout that I'm trying is gonna have more keys, so it's like I could put cool S's in the corners, I guess. I think I should do that. It, I mean, what's the point if you don't put cool S in? <laughs> Let me see. I'm also I'm I'm still just trying to like figure stuff out here. I'm trying to figure out what to do. I think All Hex just sent you a YouTube video. Yeah, it's of uh Mona Lisa in paint. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, How cool. old is this video? <laughs> <laughs> How to draw Mona Lisa with Microsoft Paint. Yes. <laughs> this is a good tutorial. <laughs> yeah, this is a three-minute tutorial. This. Anyone can draw Mona Lisa in Paint. Just follow yeah, this. <laughs> yeah. It's like in fast-forward mode, too. <laughs> Dang, that's pretty incredible. He uses triangles, like that <laughs> stick-ass keyboard that I drew for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh this guy's really good he's for sure using like not a mouse what is going on dude okay wait real quick what the fuck happened here every time I try to select something it like it appears to be selected but it doesn't look like it and then it's like not really selecting really properly Gosh, this guy's really good. <laughs> Alright. This may suffice. This is a great tutorial. Alright, second tutorial? Just like watching it off screen right now. I can tell this is already gonna be good. Oh my god. 
Oh, that's so awful. <laughs> that's so cursed. Let me see. <laughs> Take the squirrels! First you need a squirrel and some paint! Oh, gosh. <laughs> wow, this is like some real fine art. <laughs> Two or three, wow, three seven six. I wonder what's the point of Microsoft Paint's existence. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> what's the point? I don't know, man. Microsoft Paint was pretty revolutionary. I wonder if I have it on my computer. Oh, I do have paint. <laughs> I'm gonna draw the Mona Lisa. <laughs> uh. Whoa, flip note, remember flip note? There's also a swap note too. Oh, this is crazy. Oh, Classic. there's, um, is there Microsoft Paint on the Nintendo DS? There was uh, something called yeah. Flipnote. No. You're like, oh. Do you, remember, do you remember this game called Brain Age on the <laughs> Nintendo DS? Yeah, and then it had that Dr. Mario, the Touch Dr. Mario in it. Yeah, well, it wasn't a. I don't know if it was Dr. Mario. It was Dr. Mario, oh. dude. <laughs> that's, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's the reason why I started playing like the, the mobile Dr. Mario before it shut down. Because of Brain Age? Yeah, it all started because of Brain Age. And how I used to play Brain Age while I was taking a shit. <laughs> when Brain Age used to piss me off because I, it always said I had like a like a 50-year-old brain. <laughs> kind of messed up. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm, I'm not very smart. Dude, no. Don't say that, man. Oh, there you go. That's it. Oh, wait. Oh, there's no space? space? Is that for the space bar? Yeah, but it's like a really... So, okay, let me try to explain this. There's this, like... Okay, uh... uh let, me, let me see if I can explain this super well. Oh, shit, this is not helpful either. Um open let's open some other file let's for the sake of argument open up this one right this this is our our, our keyboard right or the the plate file for the keyboard mm -hmm. so <clears throat> there's this cutout right here for the space bar and it's just like you put a singular switch there and then there's like you know there's a mechanism here called stabilization where you have like a long plastic space bar it sits on this middle switch and then it sits on these two things that stabilize them so that when you press down on the key on one side, the whole bar goes down. Normally, like if you don't have a stabilizer um, there, then it's just, it's gonna like flop over. And the cool S is gonna be concealed. It is, but it's just like, you know, it's just there for like, you know, I know it's there, so that's why I think it's cool. But anyways, so, so this is like um, every, there's like a spacing system on a keyboard where like you, you look at like most of the regular alphabet keys and they're like, and the number keys are like one unit apart. Like each one is called like a one by one unit square. Um, some of your bigger keys are just like a little bit bigger. Like uh, this tab key is like 1.5 units, like just by proportion wise, like it's, it's like 1.5 times bigger. Um, so let's see this, uh, the enter, key, the enter key is about 2.25 units. It's like it's about that much bigger and then um this layout that a lot of people really like has this space bar which is like actually like seven units wide so it's like mm. the length of the space bar is like seven alphabet keys long um there's this there's this meta that i personally think is gonna pop off i think it's gonna pop off i could be totally wrong but i think it's gonna pop off and i'm really interested in it myself even if it doesn't get popular i'm still just interested in it where because you know the space bar is seven units, 
um, that means you could technically try to find ways to like break it down so that it's like three units and then a one unit key in the middle and then another three unit key uh, on the other side. So that way, like um, what ends up happening here is like, you end up just having more keys on the bottom row, but you have like two space bars, one for each thumb, and then you just have like a regular one unit key right in the middle. And so you could you could you could spam jump and counter strike. <laughs> true, that is true. Um, what intrigues me the most, like, there's a couple things that intrigue me the most about it, which is that like the way that a smaller key gets stabilized. Um, personally, like to me, I think it like sounds better um, than like having one long one or relying on a long spacebar unit to, or a spacebar key to be like pressed down. I don't think it like typically sounds as good. Um, and it's just, it's a I lot it's easier to like handle the sound for that. Um, that sounds like a pretty cool experiment. Yeah. But then the other thing too, is that <sighs> the middle key right here is just like, you now finally have like one completely centralized key. I believe it should match up with the seven key at the top. Um, at least when you're dealing with this, like 60%, let's see if that's really true. So this is at 203376. This one's also at 203376. Yeah, so these these two keys actually perfectly align with each other. But the seven key is like used for the number seven, right? So yeah. this middle key, you're not even really typically going to be using it like a space bar. You'd be using it for, I don't know, you could use it as like a, a function key or something. But visually, what interests me is that like you could throw like a, one of those like artisan keycaps right in the middle instead of like people always like put it in the escape key. But like now you can have oh, it yeah. centered. That does sound pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, I'm, I'm intrigued by that. So, so that's oh, why I'm trying to create this. Um, I've done it now here for two plates so far. I don't know. I feel like I could stop here. <laughs> So you're gonna send that in? Uh, yeah, at some point. That's pretty cool. Okay. Um, I can continue working on this or others, but I feel like I'm like I'm chill, you know. I had <laughs> enough. Like I could do this on the 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 J zero two, I suppose. Oh, uh, this is for Alps too. That's a weird one. There's a J02 somewhere. Right here. Yeah, we could do 313 on a J02, but it's just like I don't even know what key set I would put on it. Because I don't think the green's going to match. Like, I only have one keyboard or one key set that would actually allow me to do that. So then it's like I'm just like trying to choose wisely. The one keys that I have is very green. And I don't really I don't know if I really have keyboards that like match that super well. Okay. I'm chill. You guys wanna run a giveaway? <laughs> Everybody out there are down for a giveaway? Yes. <laughs> I want something. What are you giving away? We're going to run a marbles race for one of the All Hex uh, sponsored artisan keycaps. Oh, awesome. Let's see. Could I run anything else? I think we'll just run that for today. What's a marble race? Oh, you've never done marbles? <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, you're in for a treat. Okay, let me also <laughs> just poke around and see if there's anything else I can give away today. Are they real marbles, or is this like a computer thing? It's it's an RNG game. You sign up, and then it's like an RNGs. Mm. Alright, we'll just do this one. Alright guys, if anyone's out there, we'll do an All Hex Artisan, All Hex Sponsored Artisan right now. Let Can me... I play? Yeah, yeah, of course. Let me make sure that uh, Marbles doesn't need to run an update. Oh, it's a computer game. It's a Steam game. Oh. 
Can I play? Of course you can, All Hex. Of course you can. <laughs> ah, but shit. He has, to send, he has to send it to himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he sent it to me already. <laughs> then you have to send it to him. Yeah, I have to send it back to him. <laughs> Alright, guys. Uh, we're in a little bit of a bind. It looks like Marbles needs to update for some reason. I don't know why Marbles has to update so often. Like, what are they updating? Can I see, can I see All Hex's uh, keycaps? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. If I win, can I pass it to Alex? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so check Happy this birthday. out. We we modified Peasy Lodler. Happy birthday, Peasy Lodler. Happy birthday. I didn't know it was your birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, uh, I thought they were he was saying it to you <laughs> because it's not your birthday because you're a set you're a Sagittarius. <laughs> uh, Peasy Lodler. I hope uh, my my sending of all your prizes makes for an okay uh, birthday gift. But uh, I also appreciate we were. I went back and looked at some of the messages and 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 was just trying to settle this. We we increased the whoops. We increased the sizes of uh, all these stabilizer cutouts, but we also began working on these three one three layouts. So I find that really exciting. Let's do this point seven oh nine. And we are about to run another giveaway. So we began doing these 313 plates. I've made one for tray mount MX and also a serious MX. Um, I will consider doing this for the J02 and doing it for Alps variants, but we'll see. So we're on that PC with 313, right on, right on. I think that, let me, let me check this. Just, I wanna be totally certain here. The idea here is that I think, is it that the centers of both of these are supposed to be like 38.1 apart? Let's check. 184.326 minus 146.226. Oh, it worked. 
Yeah, no, I generated this off of um, uh, AIO3 play generator. Oh, okay. Smoke weed every day. Walkie <laughs> slosh. <laughs> okay, uh, looks like uh, marbles might be ready. Hold on, let's uh, let's get it booted up here. Also, if anyone wants to see my haul, uh, so I, I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier. It's still booting up.
vote for your favorite map or your favorite number from 1 to 60. Hit that exclamation vote followed by a space and followed by a number. That friggin' sound of you shaking a cassette box is very nostalgic. Wait, so what do I do? A map? Exclamation vote and then space and then any number from 1 to 60. It's your vote of which map to play out of these 60 maps. Oh. Uh, up for grabs tonight is uh, one of All Hex's, uh, these All Hex sponsored uh, nine artisans. You'll, you'll have your choice of any one of these nine. Three Aerophants. Uh, what is there? Five uh, Keymaker. Is that Keymaker? Keymaker Sprouts. And then one Butthole. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't even see this. Really tiny in my hand, and then this uh, this tiny thing. So, okay, let's see. We got a we got a many way tie. So, uh, or a couple way tie, thirty six or forty two. So, if anyone wants to break this tie in the next uh, fifteen seconds, feel free to do so. Otherwise, I'll just go on whatever I land on. Thirty six or forty two. Oh, looks like we got 42. Oh, ooh, okay, okay. All right, let's do it. Okay, guys, uh, let's do three minutes. Three minute timer. So if you haven't already done it, smash that follow button, hit that exclamation play command, enter in this uh, this mode here to potentially win one of these nine all hex sponsored artisan keycaps. Right on. So in. what do I do? What's up? Play. Yeah, just type exclamation play. <laughs> oh, Ada's here. Oh, I should also play. I always forget to enter what? my own giveaways. All heck's gonna win his artisans back. If I win, Chris gets to pick one to keep. Ooh. <laughs> Chris, Chris, if you win, you have to send it to yourself. <laughs> I wonder, like, I wonder if you could do that. Like, if I could send a label, or if I could print a label from Pirate Ship. All right, two minutes to join, guys. Gotta be here. Five-hour stream. We uh, we scanned uh, some of the film, not even all of it. <laughs> Pirate Ship would probably allow it. I wonder what like the uh, what the post office would do. Has it like have people mailed stuff to themselves? I'm googling it right now. Dang, Chris, your hair got long. Yeah, it did. It's just too much. It's crazy. Mail to yourself and schedule a pickup from your home. That's fucked up. <laughs> Just wasting everybody's time. <laughs> the Humorless Federal Copyright Office explains on its website, the practice of sending a copy of your own work to yourself is sometimes called a poor man's copyright. There is no yeah. provision in the copyright law regarding such type of protection, and it is not a substitute for registration. Okay, that has nothing <sighs> to do with what to do, like not copyright related. People did people do that with art too. Uh, yeah, they taught us that in school. Uh, okay, I found a Quora. Is it possible to send a letter or parcel to myself? Perfectly legal. I've only done it once to prove a point to someone. <laughs> Okay. Anyways, I wonder what kind of reaction the post officer would be if you handed them a package from your address address to yourself. <laughs> All right, ten seconds to join. Glad everyone could be here. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Appreciate it. Early lead goes to.
All Hex. All Hex with the early lead. Also, shit, Sinvec, I, uh, I forgot to, um, play Garbage. <laughs> shit, I legitimately forgot. I promise I wasn't trying to, like, dick you over. <laughs> Do you still want me to play it even though this might end in, like, 20 seconds? I can open it. I'll open it for you. Wow, this is awesome. No worries. Okay, I'll, I'll refund you. And feel free to redeem it again next time around, because if I don't refund you now, I'm definitely going to forget. 100%. <laughs> I'm definitely going to forget. This is a pretty cool map. Oh, ooh, a loud brother. A loud brother in this big lead with 2-1 trailing right behind. Ooh, it's a close one. Wow. Are there a any brother? Are there any remaining obstacles? Oh, it looks like it's gonna be really close between two one and a loud brother. Who's gonna get it? Who's gonna get it? <laughs> Is there only one winner? How many times are you gonna run this race? Oh good point. Is it oh my one per teacup? Oh my goodness. Now we're just doing one for tonight. <laughs> oh. One keycap out of all of them for tonight. 2-1 with the win. Wow. <laughs> so close. So close. That was pretty good. Good game. Good game. All right. Let me show this uh, back on the screen again. I could, you could choose. Choose from any one of these nine. Also, let's see who was last. Last gets to choose our raid target. Sinvec. Sinvec, last place finisher. <laughs> Ada did not finish. <laughs> 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 but uh, Sinvec was our last place finisher as per usual. Last place finisher gets to choose the raid target. Me? Are you streaming right now? All right. 2-1. Um,